Hi everyone, my name is Katie Hallis, and I'm a nutritionist with the Nutrition Education, Training, and Technical Assistance Division at USDA's Food and Nutrition Service in Child Nutrition Program. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on feeding infants starting with solids. This webinar is part of Team Nutrition's monthly CACFP Halftime 30 on Thursdays webinar series. These webinars are held on the third Thursday of every month in both English and in Spanish. The English webinar is held from 2 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and the Spanish webinar will be held from 3 to 3.30 Eastern Time. These webinars will be recorded and made available at a later date on the Team Nutrition website. We will have time at the end of this webinar to take questions. However, you can use the chat box at any time during the webinar to enter your questions, and we will try to answer as many as we can at the end. So if you still cannot hear us through your computer speakers, you can call in by phone too. Please go ahead and dial 866-740-1260, and when prompted, you can enter the access code, which is 605-4013. Okay, so before we get started, we want to know who you are. Please go ahead and select one of the following listed on the slide here. Uh, we want to know if you're a child care center, a family child care home, an at-risk after-school care center, an adult daycare center, a sponsoring organization, an emergency shelter, a school food authority, a state agency, a USDA regional office, or other. Okay, great. It looks like we have a lot of child care centers with us here today. Thank you so much for joining us. So we are also interested in learning how long you have been working with the CACFP. This includes those of you who are caring for infants and children during the day, those of you who may be responsible for planning menus and preparing meals, as well as those of you who may have administrative functions, such as tallying creditable meal counts and submitting claims. So please go ahead and select um, how long you've been working with the CACFP on the screen. Have you been working with CACFP for zero to two years, two to five years, five to eight years, eight to ten years, or more than ten years? Great. It's nice to see that we have some seasoned CACFP operators with us today, as well as some new ones. Okay, so let's get started. As babies grow, we know that we will eventually need to start, they will eventually need to start eating complementary foods in addition to breast milk and or infant formula. Complementary foods are also called solid foods. And when we say solid foods or complementary foods, we mean that we need foods that are safe and easy for a baby to eat once he or she is developmentally ready. Developmentally ready means that a baby is showing a set of skills or abilities that mean he or she is ready to try solid foods. This usually happens when the baby is around six months or so. So it could be earlier and it also could be later than six months. A baby is developmentally ready to start solid foods if he or she opens his or her mouth when foods come his or her way or reach for food, sits in a high chair with good head control, and uses his or her tongue to move food from the spoon into his or her mouth. The tongue does not automatically push the food out of his or her mouth. Keep in mind that all babies develop at their own rate. So for example, while one baby might be opening his mouth or reaching for food when he is five months old, another baby may not start doing so until she is six months old. And that's okay. The CACFP infant meal pattern gives you the flexibility to feed each baby based on their developmental readiness, such as how well the baby can control his or her muscles. That way, as a child care provider, you can help ensure that babies get what they need to grow and be healthy. Starting solid foods when a baby is developmentally ready is important because the baby is getting bigger and needs more calories and nutrients that can come from solid foods. And it gives the baby a chance to try different foods so he or she will like them at an early age and hopefully will continue to eat them as he or she gets older. 
So feeding solid foods before a baby is developmentally ready may increase the chance that he or she will choke on the food, will drink less breast milk or infant formula than needed in order to grow, or be overweight or obese later in life. Feeding solid foods before a baby is ready does not help the baby sleep through the night and actually does not make the baby eat fewer times in a day. If parents report fussiness or sleeping problems as a reason for wanting to start solid foods early, encourage them to discuss their concerns with their baby's health care provider. Sometimes ideas for other ways to calm or soothe a crying baby can be helpful because crying does not always mean that the baby is hungry. Okay, let's pause here and check your knowledge. So baby Jonathan is five and a half months old. He can sit when his mom holds him tight, but he does not have good head and neck control. Is baby Jonathan developmentally ready for solid foods? Yes or no? Please go ahead and click on the circle next to yes if you think baby Jonathan is showing signs that he is developmentally ready for solid foods, or click no if you do not think he is ready for solid foods. Again, the question is, baby Jonathan is five and a half months old. He can sit when his mom holds him tight, but he does not have good head and neck control. Is baby Jonathan developmentally ready for solid foods? Yes or no? Great job, everyone. The answer is no. Baby Jonathan is not developmentally ready to start solid foods because he's not able to sit up with good head control. Okay, let's try another one. Baby Kara is five and a half months old. She can sit up on her own with little assistance, has good head control, and keeps reaching for food when it is near. When baby Kara tried a bite of food, she was able to move it to the back of her throat to swallow. Is baby Kara developmentally ready for solid foods? Please go ahead and click on the circle next to yes if you think baby Kara is showing signs that she is developmentally ready for solid foods, or click no if you do not think she is ready for solid foods. Great job, everyone. The answer is yes. Baby Kara is showing signs that she is developmentally ready for solid foods. She is sitting up with little assistance, has good head control, and keeps reaching for, for solid foods that are near and also swallow food without pushing it back out. So as I mentioned, the CCC infant meal pattern allows for solid foods starting around six months of age. The term around is used because as we, said, as we just discussed, not all babies are developmentally ready for solid foods at exactly six months of age. Some babies may be ready for solid foods at five months, and others may be ready at six and a half months. The amounts of solid foods listed in the infant meal pattern are provided as a range, such as zero to two tablespoons, which is shown on the slide here. This provides you with the flexibility to offer the right amount of solid foods based upon the baby's developmental readiness. You would give zero tablespoons of a food if the baby has not yet started eating solids, you might give the baby less than one tablespoon of a food if they just started eating solid food. And once the baby has tried and accepted a certain food, you would offer the baby the full two tablespoons of the solid food. As a child care provider, start offering a baby solid foods after the parents have told you that the child is developmentally ready and is eating solid foods at home. Again, solid foods are foods that are easy and safe for a baby to eat once he or she is developmentally ready, usually around six months of age. Solid foods can be pureed, they can be mashed, ground, or finely chopped to allow a baby to swallow the food without choking. And again, although we are using the term solid foods in this webinar, sometimes you will hear the term complementary foods too. Solid foods can be blended with cooking liquid or water to puree the food to the texture is appropriate for a younger baby. 
As the baby gets older, you can add less liquid to create a thicker texture. However, remember, if you're cooking for one baby, you can use breast milk or infant formula to change the texture of the food. For packaged foods, like iron fortified infant cereal, uh, be sure to follow the preparation directions on the package. Pureed foods are foods that are blended to a very smooth texture. And once a baby is used to pureed foods, mashed foods are actually a good texture to try next. Mashed foods are lumpier than pureed foods. At around eight months of age, the baby may be ready for new textures. You can grind or finely chop soft foods into small pieces, no larger than a half inch or thin slices to avoid choking. Food should be easy for the baby to chew and swallow. Okay, let's try another check your knowledge question. A parent asks you to start serving their five month old baby solid foods at your child care site. But you know that infant meal pattern age groups are zero through five months and six through 11 months. If you serve the baby solid foods when they are developmentally ready at five months, can you still claim reimbursement for his meals and snacks? Yes or no? Please go ahead and click on the circle next to your answer. Again, a parent asks you to start serving their five-month-old baby solid foods at your child care site. But you know that infant meal pattern age groups are zero through five months and six through 11 months. If you serve the baby solid foods at five months, can you still claim reimbursement for his meals and snacks? Yes or no? Great job. Yes, the answer is yes. If the baby is developmentally ready to accept solid foods and it's okay with the parents, then yes, you can claim reimbursement for solid foods at his meals and snacks even if he's younger than six months old. As a general best practice, it is recommended to get, in a, get a written note from the parent stating his or her baby can be served solid foods, but it is not a requirement in the CACFP. So the CACFP infant meal pattern for babies six through 11 months includes solid foods such as iron fortified dry infant cereals, fish, poultry, meat, whole eggs, including both the egg yolk and egg white, cooked dry beans or peas, cheese and cottage cheese, yogurt, vegetables, fruits, ready-to-eat cereals at snack only, and breads and crackers at snack only. Grain serve must be made with enriched or whole grain meal or flour, and ready-to-eat breakfast cereals and infant cereals that are fortified are also creditable. However, there is not a whole grain rich requirement in the CACFP infant meal pattern. Ready to eat cereals include flakes, rounds, and O-shaped cereals that older babies can pick up and eat. These cereals can only credit towards snacks, not meals. The cereal must not contain more than six grams of sugar per, per dry ounce of cereal and must be iron fortified. Some ready to eat cereals may be a choking hazard. So be sure to choose cereals that dissolve easily in the mouth and do not include nuts, dried fruits, or other hard food items. Almost all infant cereals meet the sugar limit, and there are many types of ready-to-eat cereals that meet the sugar limit as well. And there are a couple of ways to figure out if a cereal meets the sugar requirement. You can use any cereal that is listed on any state agency's Women, Infants, and Children or WIC approved cereal list found as part of the state's approved food list. You can also use the chart in USDA Teen Nutrition's training worksheet titled Choose Breakfast Cereals That Are Lower in Added Sugars. We also have a recorded CACFP Halftime 30 on Thursday's webinar available on this topic. We will go ahead and broadcast the link to the Teen Nutrition Worksheet in the chat box now. We will also include the link in the post-webinar email you will receive with your certificate. So dry iron fortified infant cereal is cereal that has iron added to it. Iron is an important nutrient for babies. Both single grain infant cereal, such as wheat, oat, and barley, as well as mixed grain infant cereal are creditable as long as they are iron fortified. Babies should be given the single grain iron fortified infant cereal first to make sure he or she does not have an allergic reaction. 
If the baby does not have a reaction, then mixed grain iron fortified infant cereal can be offered. To tell if an infant cereal is iron fortified, look at the ingredient list on the back of the infant cereal package. As long as one of the ingredients listed is iron, ferric fumarate, electrolytic iron, or iron electrolytic, then the cereal is iron fortified. It may also say iron fortified on the package. Meats and poultry, including beef, pork, lamb, veal, chicken, and turkey, are creditable in the CACSP meal pattern, infant meal pattern. Like iron fortified infant cereals, meats and poultry are good first foods for babies because they provide iron and zinc that babies need around six months of age. Both finfish and shellfish, purchased from a commercial source, may be offered to infants six through 11 months old when developmentally ready for solid foods. Home caught fish is only creditable if it meets state or local public health policies regarding food safety. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, there is no evidence that waiting to introduce common allergens, such as fish or shellfish, beyond four to six months of age will prevent a food allergy. Remove any bones or shells and modify the texture of the fish and shellfish based upon the feeding skills of the baby to reduce the risk of choking. In terms of meat alternates, Whole eggs, including both the egg yolk and the egg white, must be served in order for it to be creditable. Any cooked dry beans and peas, such as lentils, black beans, pinto beans, or chickpeas, may be served to babies who are developmentally ready to accept them. This includes canned beans and peas. Look for those labeled reduced sodium. Puree or mash beans and peas to avoid choking. And as a reminder, green peas are not considered a meat alternate. Pasteurized cheeses are allowed under the infant meal pattern. However, cheese food, cheese bread, and cheese products are not creditable because they are generally higher in salt and lower in protein. And lastly, store-bought low-fat, reduced fat, and whole milk yogurts are creditable under the infant meal pattern. Homemade yogurts are not creditable. The yogurt, however, must contain no more than 23 grams of sugar per six ounces of yogurt. To help you identify yogurts with no more than 23 grams of sugar per six ounces, you can use the chart in USDA's Teen Nutrition's training worksheet, Choose Yogurts That Are Lower in Added Sugars. We also have a recorded CSUC Halftime 30 on Thursdays webinar available on this topic too. We will go ahead and broadcast the link to the Teen Nutrition worksheet in the chat box now. We will also include the link in the post-webinar email you will receive with your certificate. So all vegetables and fruits can be offered to babies. They contain important nutrients and fiber. To avoid choking, remember to cook and prepare vegetables and fruits to the appropriate texture. Remove all pits, seeds, skins, and peels before serving the food. Always cut vegetables and fruits into thin slices and no larger than a half inch to prevent choking. Fruit and vegetable juices, even if it's 100% juice, are not creditable under the infant meal pattern. Okay, so far we've talked about when to feed a baby solid foods and the types of solid foods that can be served to meet the CACFP infant meal pattern. Now let's talk about some of the important tips you need to remember when feeding a baby solid foods. If using baby food from a jar, pouch, or other container, first put the baby food in a bowl or on a plate. Then, feed a baby with a spoon from the bowl or plate. If more food is needed from the container, use a clean spoon to remove the food from the container onto the plate or bowl. This helps keep bacteria that can come from baby's saliva out of the food container so that any leftover food can be stored safely. Talk to the baby in a soft and encouraging voice. Keep good eye contact and smile. Games and other disruptions can be distracting or overwhelming to a baby. When the baby is developmentally ready, let the baby try feeding him or herself. Soft, soft finger foods give the baby a chance to feed themselves without assistance. You can also let the baby try eating with a spoon. Monitor the baby during the meal for any signs of choking or, le or allergic reactions. And throw away any uneaten food in the bowl or plate. Remember, you're a role model, role model for the baby. You can model how to eat new foods for the baby. 
Meal times provide a chance to show the baby how to use a spoon or fork to eat a small amount of food. You can show your enjoyment of the food by smiling and using a positive tone of voice. And if older children eat meals with the baby at the child care site, encourage them to also model good eating behaviors for the baby. This can help create a positive and encouraging eating environment. When preparing foods for babies, make sure it is in a form that can easily be chewed and swallowed. Think of the shape, size, and texture when choosing foods. And to prevent choking, you can grind up tough meats, cook or steam food until it is soft, Puree, mash, or finely chop foods into small pieces, no larger than a half inch, or thin slices or strips. Remember to also remove seeds, pits, tough skins, and peels from fruits and vegetables, and remove all bones from fish, chicken, and meat before cooking, cooking or serving. So parents may also provide only may provide only one food component as part of a reimbursable meal or snack. So for babies that are developmentally ready and are eating solid foods, there are two options to claim reimbursement. One, if the parent provides breast milk or creditable infant formula for their baby, then your child care site must provide all of the solid food components in order for the meal to be reimbursable. The second option, if the parent provides a solid food component for a baby, then your child care site must provide a creditable iron fortified infant formula and all other solid food components. Okay, let's try one last check your knowledge. You notice that a baby in your care is developmentally ready for solid foods, and the parents agree. The parents tell you that they have pureed sweet potatoes at home, so you offer the baby some at child care. The baby takes one bite at lunch. Can you claim the sweet potatoes as part of a reimbursable lunch? Yes or no? Please go ahead and click on the circle next to your answer. Again, you notice that the baby in your care is developmentally ready for solid foods, and the parents agree. The parents tell you that they have had pureed sweet potatoes at home, so you offer the baby some at child care. The baby takes one bite. Can you claim the sweet potatoes as part of a reimbursable meal or snack? Yes or no? Great job, the answer is yes. You can claim the sweet potatoes as part of a reimbursable lunch even if the baby only takes a bite. Remember from earlier in this webinar, the amounts of solid foods listed in the infant meal pattern are provided as a range, such as zero to two tablespoons. This provides you with the flexibility to offer the right amount of solid foods based upon the baby's developmental readiness. Since this baby just started eating solid foods and is getting used to it, they were done after one bite and that is okay. So that concludes the informational portion of our webinar for today. We will take questions in a few minutes, so please go ahead and start typing them now into your chat box on your screen. While you guys are getting your questions entered, I'll go over some post-webinar housekeeping information. So those of you attending the webinar for the entire 30 minutes today will receive a certificate via email by the end of the day on Tuesday, September 25th. Please wait until after September 25th and check your spam or junk mailboxes before inquiring about your certificate. If you are viewing the webinar with multiple people in the room, you can print out a certificate for each person. More practice questions are available at the National CACFP Sponsors Association website at the link at the website www.cacfp.org slash 30 on Thursdays. We will go ahead and broadcast the website link in the chat box now. For those of you who want to submit or track continuing education credits with the National CACFP Sponsors Association, you can do that at that link as well. Again, it's www.cacfp.org slash 30 on Thursdays. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the Team Nutrition website at a later date. If you're watching this as a recorded webinar, um, and want to receive a certificate, you can go to the National CACFP Sponsors Association website at www.cacfp.org slash 30 on Thursdays to complete the post-webinar practice questions and then receive a certificate. The certificates may be sent a few days after completing the questions. 
Once again, thank you for joining us for today's webinar on feeding infants starting with solids. The next webinar will be held on October 18th where we will discuss identifying whole grain rich foods for the CACFP using the ingredient list. And then on November 15th, we will discuss grain-based desserts in the CACFP. Finally, please feel free to visit our website, subscribe to our monthly e-newsletter, connect with us via email at teamnutrition at fns.usda.gov, and follow us on Twitter. And now we will take some questions. And in the room with me are Mimi Wu, Xavier Davis, and Rachel Polon, three colleagues here in child nutrition who will be helping me with asking and answering your questions. Okay, Katie, we got a lot of great questions today. So the first question is, so in your examples at the beginning of the presentation, both babies were five and a half months old. How come one was ready to start solid foods and one wasn't? Okay, great question. So yes, both babies were the same age at the beginning of the presentation. So both Jonathan and Kara were five and a half months, and they were demonstrating different developmental abilities. One baby, I think it was baby Kara, could sit up on her own. Um, she also had good head control and kept reaching for food when it was close to her. And these are all signs that a baby is ready to start eating solid food. On the other hand, baby Jonathan could only sit up when his mom held him tight, um, and he also didn't have good head control. So these signs mean that he is not quite developmentally ready to start eating solid foods. Okay, thank you for that answer. And the next question is, is soy yogurt creditable for babies? Oh, another good question. Okay, so no, soy yogurt and actually also tofu are only allowed as a meat alternate in the child and adult meal patterns, not in the infant meal pattern. This is consistent with recommendations from the National Academy of Medicine, which recommended tofu as a meat alternate for children and adults. Meat and meat alternates allowed for infants when babies are developmentally ready include meat, poultry, fish, dried beans and peas, whole eggs, cheese, cottage cheese, and yogurt. Um, but this is consistent with the National this is consistent with the National Academy of Medicine's report, which only recommended tofu as a meat alternate and soy yogurt for children um, and adult participants. Okay, great, thanks. So we have another question here. It says, if I put the infant cereal in a bottle with formula, is the cereal and or formula reimbursable? Okay, no. If infant cereal is mixed in the same bottle with infant formula and or breast milk, then that mixture, and that mixture is served in a bottle to a baby, then neither the infant formula or breast milk, or the cereal are reimbursable. The only exception to that is if you have a medical statement on file for the baby to support this practice. Um, and for more information on that, definitely go ahead and contact your state agency or sponsoring organization. Okay, and another question we received is, do I have to serve both the egg yolk and egg white to the baby to get reimbursement for it? Yes, so this is a change. So the updated meal pattern, which were uh, implemented in October of 2017, included the option to offer whole eggs, meaning both the egg yolk and egg white as part of the infant meal pattern. Um, so as some of you may remember, in the old meal pattern, only egg yolks were creditable in the infant meal pattern um, because there were concerns with developing food allergies when babies are exposed to the protein in the egg white. However, the American Academy of Pediatrics recently concluded that there is no convincing evidence um, to delay the introduction of foods that are considered major food allergens, such as eggs. So both, um, you must serve both the egg yolk and egg white, is what we refer to as the whole egg, um, in order to claim it for reimbursement. Okay, and I think that is all the time we have for questions today. Okay, um, well, thank you all for your great questions. If you have additional questions or need more clarification on any topics we discussed today, um, please be sure to reach out to your state agency or sponsoring organization. And that is all we have time for today, but please know that we do read all of your chat box questions and comments, as well as comments in the post-webinar survey um, in order to continually improve these webinars and hopefully meet your needs. Thanks again, and we look forward to seeing you all on our next webinar on October 18th.